welcome back to another Lolita DIY slash sew with me video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made my very first pair of bloomers using one of the patterns from my Otome No Sewing Books and just kind of using the opportunity to share some relaxing Lolita sewing content with you all as I slowly work to catch up on all of my February sewing projects. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. Starting first with the materials, for the main fabric I'm going to be using this super lightweight white cotton fabric. For the lace I decided to use this scalloped floral lace that I had just on hand in my fabric stash. I really liked the details on this lace, all the little flowers along the top and as well as the little scalloped edge and just thought it would look really nice on a pair of bloomers so ultimately I decided to go with this one. And finally, I used this white ribbon for the bow details that I ended up adding towards the top of the bloomers. So like I mentioned already, I'm going to be using one of the patterns from my Otome no Sewing Books for this project and have honestly really been enjoying working from these books. Um, I know a few of you have suggested for me to do a flip through and pattern review of one of the Otome no Sewing Books as well as some of the patterns in my uh, Gothic Lolita Bibles and I really think that's something I'm going to consider doing in the future as I really do enjoy working from these books and could probably talk about them all day. <laughs> There was only one pattern piece for this project, which was so nice. So I just laid out the Otome no sewing pattern and traced out the bloomer pattern piece that I needed on a separate piece of paper before moving on to cutting it out on my main fabric. And in case you were wondering what that smiling face is on my foot, it is a sloth. Those are my sloth socks and I love them very much. So I just finished cutting out the pieces for my bloomers. So I have one and then two. And I decided that I was actually going to flatline the pieces, meaning that each piece is technically two layers. And that's really just because this fabric is a little thin and kind of see-through-y. And even though this is gonna be something that goes like underneath my dresses and stuff like that, I still wanted it to have like some coverage. So I am actually going to be treating these pieces as a single piece. So that way I don't have to create a lining for anything. So yeah, when you see me sewing it, I'm actually sewing two pieces of fabric together, but I'm treating it like a single piece just so that I don't have to make um, a lining for this. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and set up up the sewing machine now. To start off, I used a zigzag stitch along the edges of the inner leg pieces to not only prevent them from fraying, but also to hold my flat lining pieces in place so that they wouldn't shift around later. Once that was finished, I moved on to trying to figure out how I wanted to arrange the lace. Now, admittedly, this did end up taking a bit of time, as you see, because originally I planned on using two different types of lace, but after laying everything out in front of me, I realized that the second lace that I had wanted to use wouldn't really be seen after the elastic had been inserted, so I just started playing around with different arrangements for just the scallop lace before finally settling on an arrangement that I liked and decided to go with that one. The lace arrangement idea that I came up with not only creates a continuous pattern effect once sewn together, but it also allows me to take advantage of this extra two or so inches of fabric that you see here at the top of the lace in order to create a channel for the elastic. I attached the lace with the elastic channel to the bottom of the bloomers first, and then sewed along the top edge of the channel to secure it in place. Next, I took the second piece of scallop lace, which I trimmed and ironed to just above where the flower embroidery started, and placed it right sides together and sewed it down right along the bottom edge that you see here to finish creating the elastic channel. Despite 
it sounding super complicated, it was actually pretty easy to put together. I also really ended up liking how the lace at the top concealed the elastic channel on the front of the bloomers once it was slipped up, so I thought this lace arrangement actually worked out pretty well. Once the channel was complete, I just flipped the top lace up and sewed an additional line of stitches near the scalloped edge to keep it from falling down, and then moved on to inserting and sewing down the elastic into the channel. With right sides facing, I pinned my two leg pieces together along the crotch seam and proceeded to sew them together. And because I didn't bother to read the part in the instructions telling me to add an additional two inches at the top of the pattern for my waistband, um, I went ahead and quickly made my own separate waistband, which I attached and then sewed in place. Okay, so bloomers are officially finished and they're nice, they're nice. But the problem that I've come across since I finished making them is that I cannot tell which side is the front and which side is the back just from looking at it from the outside. So solution, I made, ah, uh, okay, after I dropped it, I made this cute little bow thingy to put on the front part of the bloomer so that I'm able to tell which side is the front and the back. So I'm going to hand sew on this little bow that I made. And then after that, this should be done. So yeah, just wanted to do that quick check-in before I ultimately finish this project. And yeah, okay. Okay, seriously, for being a relatively simple DIY, I think these turned out super cute. I absolutely love the lace that I decided to use for these, and even though they may not be the most elaborate thing I've ever made, I honestly just enjoyed working on a project that wasn't super complex and that I was able to finish pretty quickly. And yeah, I just, I just love looking at them. They are so frilly. Right, so here they are in all their frilly glory. I wanted to start off first by wearing them with just a blouse and some OTKs just to get a feel, you know, for how everything looked together since this is my first time ever wearing bloomers despite wearing Lolita fashion for the past six years. Let's not talk about it. Um, I, I actually did feel kind of awkward at first when I put these on, primarily because I had nothing to compare it to. Um, prior to this, I used to just wear like jogging or workout shorts underneath my dresses and skirts. So putting these on felt a little strange and all I kept thinking the whole time was, is this right? Do they fit properly? Are they the right length? Can you see my knees? And like ridiculous things like that. Honestly, I think I just need to get used to seeing them on myself and ultimately just wearing them more often. And what better way to do that than by starting now? Ta-da! <laughs> Say hello to the newest addition to my wardrobe, morning breakfast toast collection, my most recent dream dress acquisition. I love this dress and honestly it was just an excuse to wear it in a video because you, you needed to see it. You needed to see it and you needed to see me in it. But anyways, I'm very happy with how this DIY turned out and I'm looking forward to going out into the world and starting my new life as a proper Lolita. Um, in my bloomers. So uh, yeah, that is actually everything for this video. Thank you all again so much for watching and I will see you in my next one.